Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept from us this gathering and he forgive our sins. And I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept so far what we have done of good deeds and to give us more energy and ability and strength that we continue worshipping him subhanahu wa ta'ala until the day we meet him. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I wanted to share with you one hadith today and reflect over this hadith. This is the hadith that is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and it is found in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim. So it's an authentic hadith in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man saama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambih. Translating this hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of Iman, out of faith, and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive him for his past sins. Now this is a very common hadith. We all know this hadith. Children are memorizing it. We hear it over and over before Ramadan. And during Ramadan, we hear this hadith. But I want to explain this hadith and go into depth in this hadith so that bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, if we were to fulfill the condition of fasting out of Iman and seeking the reward from Allah, if we were to fulfill this condition, then bi-idhnillah, we get the grand reward which is being forgiven for our sins. And this, being forgiven for your past sins, is one of the grand and great prizes and gifts and rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the fasting person at the end of Ramadan. And why do I want to share this hadith and highlight its importance and discuss it? Because from the many good deeds that we do during Ramadan, of praying, zakat, uh, giving charity, reading Quran, suhoor, iftar, and all these good deeds that we do, the most important one is fasting. Why? Because fasting is the pillar of this month. It's the obligation of this month. So we need to focus and pay attention on our fasting. And we need to ask ourselves the question every day, are we fasting correctly or not? Are we fasting in the manner Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed and informed us or we're not? So this is why I wanted to share this hadith with you from the very beginning of Ramadan. We only now have completed the second day and we're coming into the third day. And it is very, very important that you get your fasting right because this is the obligation. And if it's the obligation, it's the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in al-hadith al-Qudsi, he said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطُّهُ عَلَيْهِ Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, hadith Qudsi, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paraphrased and told us that Allah said that the most beloved thing with which my slave comes near to me is what I have enjoined upon him. In other words, this hadith is saying that whoever wants to be close to Allah, whoever seeks nearness to Allah and wants to be close, isn't that the case of everyone? Doesn't everyone want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Doesn't everyone want to be a servant that Allah azza wa jal loves and he loves Allah azza wa jal? That's everyone's case. Everyone wants to be close to Allah. Listen to this hadith. Allah said, whoever wants to be close to me, then the best way possible and the quickest road to the nearness and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by fulfilling the obligations. So the obligations in and of themselves, if they are done correctly, then a person has reached closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the main pillar and the obligation of Ramadan is fasting. So we need to get this right. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let's look at this hadith. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began this hadith by saying, Man saama Ramadan, whoever fasts Ramadan, the word whoever, it includes everyone. 
male, female, young, old, whatever it is. Anyone who fasts this month. So this is a chance and an opportunity and Allah Azza wa has opened the door for every single person. Saam Ramadan, fasted Ramadan. What does it mean to fast Ramadan? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, when he explained the word fasting Ramadan, he said, Siyaman kamila, meaning whoever fasts Ramadan completely and perfectly. He fasts Ramadan completely. So we need to understand what does it mean to fast Ramadan completely? And what does it mean to perfect our fasting? Because the word kamal, it comes from, يعني, uh, or kamilan, comes from the word kamal, and kamal means to perfect something. So what does it mean to fast Ramadan completely, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah described? You see, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to understand, we need to understand that the purpose of fasting when we refrain from eating and drinking and sexual relations, the purpose of that is to attain taqwa, as Allah Azza said in the Quran. What is taqwa exactly? Yani very basic, in basic words I put it for you. Taqwa is to increase in your obedience to Allah Azza and decrease in your disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is basically what taqwa is to do more good deeds, to be um, rushing to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, and to abstain and keep away from that which Allah Azza wa Jal prohibited. This is what taqwa is. That's the purpose of fasting. So when we know this and keep this in mind, that the purpose of fasting is to attain taqwa, now, now we realize and we know that fasting is two types. There are two sides to fasting. So, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever fasts Ramadan, what is meant by this is that you're supposed to have the two sides of fasting. What are these two sides of fasting? Because as I said to you, fasting is two sides. Number one, it's the common, which everyone knows, and that is to refrain from food, drink, and sexual relations from Fajr to Maghrib with the intention of fasting. Alhamdulillah, this is the fasting that everyone knows. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, in beautiful words, after looking at all the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning fasting, he gives us a simple statement and he says to us, As-sawmu huwa sawmu al-jawarihi an al-atham wa sawmu al-batni an al-sharabi wa al-ta'am. Allahu Akbar. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, in his words, he teaches us the two sides of fasting. He says, fasting is the, is the fasting of the limbs from sin, evil, and transgression. And it is also the fasting of the stomach from food and drink. These are the two sides of fasting. As Salaf rahimahumullah, they said that uh, the easiest type of fasting is to refrain from food and drink and sexual relations. This pretty much everyone does, and everyone knows how to do that. It's not a challenge. It gets difficult towards the end, but alhamdulillah, we can bear in patience until Adhan al-Maghrib. But the real fasting and the difficult fasting that must also be achieved alongside giving up food, drink, and sexual relations is the fasting of abstaining from all forms of sin and transgression. Very important. My brothers and sisters in Islam, listen carefully to what I am saying. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Since we are in Ramadan, Allah blessed us with this opportunity, we must fast correctly. One side of fasting is to refrain from food and drink and sexual relations. That's the easy fasting. And alongside that, your limbs must fast from the haram, from the sins and transgression, especially when you are fasting during the day. Now, keeping away from sin and transgression, this is a must throughout the year, but it becomes even extra and more important and more emphasis is placed on it during the day when you are fasting. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the hadith, 
من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به والجهل فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه سبحان الله The matter is serious my brothers and sisters in Islam يعني this hadith that I just read to you now within this hadith النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling us that alongside giving up food, drink and sexual relations you must also give up another three things Did you know this? You must give up another three things in order to fast correctly and completely. What are these three things? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the first one is قول الزور قول الزور The word azur is a comprehensive word for every type of falsehood that we know about. قول الزور therefore means false speech. Evil speech. That's the first thing that you must refrain and keep away from. False and evil speech. That means we're not allowed to swear during the day as we are fasting. We're not allowed to tell lies. We're not allowed to backbite and slander and mock and insult others. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a real matter. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this in the hadith. Alongside giving up food, drink and sexual relations, he also told us there are another three things we need to refrain and keep away from. And he said, قول الزور, evil speech. Control your tongues during the day. Control your tongues during Ramadan. Yani, we need to control our tongue throughout the year. But especially in Ramadan, it must be controlled. Because when you refrain from eating, drinking, and sexual relation, when you do that type of fasting, and your stomach is fasting, that the purpose of that is to nurture a taqwa within us. It's to grow this taqwa in us. So part of a taqwa is to leave off evil speech, is to leave off backbiting and gossip and slander and insults and screaming at the people and so on. Leave all that. You must fast from that. The second thing in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ And evil deeds, evil actions. So evil actions include the glance of the eye. So that, so that means the eye must fast with you. Avoid looking at the haram. Remind yourself during the day as you're fasting. Avoid looking at the haram. Look at that which Allah Azza wa Jal made permissible for you. Look at the sky, for example. That's permissible. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yuhibbu nawara ila sama. He used to love looking at the sky. Even Allah Azza wa Jal described this in the Quran. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran he mentioned a moment in where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting and looking at the sky. Look at something that is beneficial, something that is healthy. Avoid looking at the haram. Lower your gaze when you see women, whether it's on your phone screen or whether it's in public, wherever you are, fear Allah Azza wa Jal with your eye. Lowering the gaze doesn't only mean to lower it when you see a woman, but also lower it from the affairs of people. Lower your gaze from the affairs of people. My brothers and sisters in Islam, your eye must fast with you as you fast during the day. وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, we must give up al-'amala bih. We must give up evil actions. So that also includes the actions of the E. So your E must fast with you. You're not allowed to listen to something haram. If you want to achieve a complete perfect fasting, your E must fast with you. Don't listen to anything haram. Music is haram. Do not listen to it. Uh, sitting in a gathering in where people are backbiting, it's haram for you to remain in that gathering. Get up and move away. A gathering that is mocking Allah Azza wa Jal and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, it's unfortunate there are Muslims on TikTok and Instagram and so on. 
that produce mini clips mocking the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not listen to that. Move away from that. Protect your e from listening to Al-Haram because your e must fast with you. Also, the hands, that's a limb that does action. It must fast with you. So do not touch Al-Haram. Do, don't tap Al-Haram with your phone. Don't type evil speech. Because if you type something offensive or you type something that's considered backbiting or insults or slanders, that is considered al That's considered evil action and evil speech together. For fear Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah gave us an opportunity to live through this Ramadan. So make the most of it and fast correctly and perfectly in order to earn the grand reward. طيب. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, in addition to this, the feet must fast as well. So do not walk to that which is haram. Do not walk to al-haram. If you know about a gathering, that they're speaking something evil and foolish, don't walk to that gathering. Refrain from all of this. If you intend to commit a sin during the day, don't walk to it. Give it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, our fasting, when we refrain from eating and drinking and sexual relations, the purpose of that is not to become hungry and feel the hunger. The purpose is for our taqwa to be nurtured. The purpose is for us to say, Allah, I've been fasting all these hours and I've been refraining from that which is halal which is water and food and drink. I've refrained from that which is halal. Therefore, logically, I must refrain from that which is haram of false evil speech and evil actions of the eye and the e and the hands and the feet. It makes sense. It makes sense, my brothers and sisters in Islam. This is complete fasting. This is perfect fasting. And notice, subhanAllah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, he mentioned that we must give up evil speech before he mentioned evil actions. Look, yes, because this tongue is the thing that will bring a lot of people in Jahannam. It is because of the tongue that many people are thrown in Jahannam. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that on the day of judgment, the limbs of a person begin to testify against that evil, corrupt person. He said that the tongue will testify against him first, then his hand, then his feet. The tongue was mentioned first because this here creates the most evil. You know, for, watch out for your tongue, control your tongue. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned it first. So many people fall into sins as a result of their tongue and what their tongue spoke. So control what you speak, control it. Umar radiallahu anhu, he wished that he had a long neck so that he can think about the word before it comes out. So it's very important that we control our tongues from evil, false speech. Give it up. If you feel you have a desire to respond to someone and you feel you have a desire that you have the opportunity and, and you've got a uh, like a level above a person in where you can absolutely smash him with your words. Hold yourself back. Hold yourself back. Do not argue. Do not lie. Not even jokes. As in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever, whoever gives up uh, lying, even if it was a joke, Allah Azza wa Jal prepared a house for him in the paradise. So we're discouraged from speaking anything that is evil. You want to speak? Speak good. Speak good. Encourage people to give a sadaqah. Encourage people to, to do a good deed. You know, post a hadith, authentic hadith. Post a good action or a good deed that people can do during the month of Ramadan. Benefit the people instead of speaking rubbish and having these words witness against you on the day of judgment. And having these words be a result for why your fasting was incomplete and not perfect. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we want 
taqwa to flow in our body and in our veins. We want a taqwa to flow in our tongue, a taqwa to flow in our eyes. We want our eyes to be controlled by taqwa and our hands and our feet, everything to be controlled by the taqwa that we want to earn in this month. And the third thing in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to keep away from in order to completely fast is al-jahl. Al-jahl. Al-jahl is two things. Al-jahl is ignorance. Ignorance. We need to give up ignorance. What does that mean? Ignorance is not implementing the knowledge that you know. That's ignorance. So if you know that praying is obligatory, but you choose not to pray during the day of Ramadan, that is ignorance. You're not fasting completely. Your fasting is incomplete because you haven't let go of your ignorance. How do you know that Salat is obligatory? Then you don't pray. How do you know that Zakat is obligatory? Then you do not pay your Zakat al-Mal. How? Even this is ignorance. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when you are fasting, you must give up ignorance. So implement the knowledge that you know so that you can avoid being ignorant. And the other meaning for ignorance is the foolish, arrogant character oppressing others. Right? That's impermissible. Especially during Ramadan. If you um, bring out a foolish, arrogant character, you begin to oppress others and you scream at others and you become jahilun alayhim, right? If you, if you become foolish upon the people, your fasting is incomplete. So don't argue with anyone. Don't swear at anyone. Don't raise your voice at anyone. And if someone becomes foolish towards you and someone curses you and someone wants to pick a fight with you, we're commanded that we respond to this person. But how? We say, Inni sa'im, inni sa'im. Yani Allahu Akbar. Even the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us advice what we're supposed to do if we're not the fools, but someone is foolish towards us. Someone is obnoxious towards us. Someone's lost the plot and is crazy towards us and arrogant and oppressive towards us. Don't fight back. Don't respond back. Respond with a few words. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tell him, Inni sa'im. I am fasting. Say it again. I am fasting twice. Remind yourself. Yani in context, it means, hey, you oppressor, I am fasting. And I don't want to respond to your foolishness with evil words because I can do that. I can swear at you just like you swore at me. I can hit you just like you hit me. But I don't want to do that because I am fasting. I am fasting. He doesn't mean when you respond to the foolish person saying, I am fasting. It doesn't mean you're fasting, refraining from food, drink, and sexual relation. In context here, it means I am fasting from foolish behavior. I am fasting from evil words. I'm not going to deal with you and treat you in the same manner you are treating me. I'll give it up for the sake of Allah Azza wa for the sake of preserving my fasting and making sure that my fasting is perfect and complete so I can earn the grand reward that is going to be mentioned at the end of the hadith when I share it with you, which is forgiveness. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, whoever doesn't give up false and evil words and evil actions and ignorance and foolish behavior, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Allah is not in need of this fasting person giving up his food and drink. Allah is not in need of you fasting. If, if you're going to run your mouth and your tongue wild and commit sins and sins and sins during the day and practice foolishness during the day, Allah is saying, I don't need your fasting. What does that mean? Meaning your fasting is not rewarded. That fasting is nullified. That fasting is not accepted. Allahu Akbar. Isn't the matter is serious. And this hadith is authentic. Collected by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah in his sahih. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, 
We must understand in order to man sama Ramadan, right? Going back to the hadith I'm sharing, whoever fasts Ramadan, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, meaning he completely fasted Ramadan, fasted it completely with perfection. That means alongside your stomach fasting from food, drink, and leaving, avoiding sexual relation, alongside that, your tongue must fast. And your limbs must fast and you must not produce foolish evil character and oppress others that also must fast with you then and only you have truly fasted now you will earn the great and complete reward my brothers and sisters in islam you are rewarded according to how complete your fasting is the less complete it is the less reward you earn the closer your fasting is to completion and perfection, the greater and more your reward is. That's a standard. Because we are rewarded for our fasting just like we are rewarded for our salat. And how are we rewarded for our salat? So I, you can understand this statement that I mentioned. How are we rewarded for our salat? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna rajula layan sarifu وَمَا كُتِبَ لَهُ إِلَّا عُشْرُ صَلَاتِهِ تُسْعُهَا ثُمْنُهَا سُبْعُهَا سُدْسُهَا خُمْسُهَا رُبْعُهَا ثُلْثُهَا نِصْفُهَا And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he described to us the type of reward a praying person earns, he said that a person that prayed could earn a tenth reward of his salat. Oh, akbar. He prays four rak'at salat al dhuhr he could end up only receiving a tenth of the reward. Or could end up receiving a ninth, or an eighth, or a seventh, or a sixth, or a fifth, or a fourth, or a third, or a half, or even a quarter, right? Yani, what type of reward would you earn for your salat according to your khushu'ah? The more complete your salat is, the more khushu' in your salat, the higher, higher reward you get. The less khushu', the less complete, you're praying quickly, you're turning left and right as you pray, you're looking up and down, you're scratching your hand and your feet and your legs and whatever it is. The more you do this, the less and less and less reward. So you might end up coming out and receiving only a tenth of the reward. Fasting is exactly the same thing. When we fast, we could end up earning only a tenth of the reward or a ninth of the reward or an eighth all the way until half of the reward and perhaps a complete reward so the the better you fast the more complete you fast that is the fasting of the stomach we said and the fasting of the limbs the greater greater the reward is and the less perfect your fasting is the slower and lower your reward would be and remember that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said, رب صائم ليس له من صيامه إلا الجوع That there are people that fast who get nothing from their fasting except hunger. What does that mean? Meaning they don't get reward, all they got was hunger. They went for a few hours hungry and that's it, no reward. ورب قائم ليس له من قيامه إلا السهر And there are people that pray, pray the nights of Ramadan and earn nothing. They don't get anything except sleepless nights and becoming tired, right? And heavy eyes, yani, no reward. He only tired himself, that's all. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, be careful. Man saama Ramadan, fast Ramadan completely. Tayyip. Uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, continuing that hadith, Man saama Ramadan imanan. Whoever fasts Ramadan completely, I just explained to you how that is done. Out of iman, imanan. What does that mean? Allahu Akbar. Yani your fasting must be out of iman. Meaning, when you fast during the day, you must be certain that Ramadan is an obligation ordained by Allah Azza wa Jal. You must acknowledge its obliga obligation. Acknowledge it in your heart. When you get up, 
your servant. Now, yes, Allah Azza wa Jal enjoined upon us a month known as Ramadan in which we must fast. Imanan. Don't doubt. Don't be in doubt. Don't sit there and say, oh, Allah, you know what? I was born a Muslim and Muslims are fasting. Let me just fast alongside with them. I don't know. Maybe this is an obligation. Maybe it's not. But I'm fasting anyway. That's not Imanan. That's Ariban. That's fasting Ramadan in doubt. That's a serious crime. Such a person receives no reward. Your fasting must be Imanan. You see the Tanween at the end? For greatness, for certainty. Fast Ramadan and you're absolutely certain this is the way to go. This is the way to go to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the way of guidance. This is the path to Allah's pleasure and happiness. So Imanan, when you're fasting Ramadan, acknowledge its obligation and love for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be in your heart as well. That's Imanan. That's Imanan. Loving the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Can't wait for the third day to fast. Can't wait for the fourth day. Allahu Akbar. Heck, this is the kind of energy and the kind of charge you're supposed to have within you that I cannot wait to fast tomorrow. Imanan. Imanan. Iman. So when you fast, loving Allah's command, don't approach the day of Ramadan with a lazy attitude or with a doubtful attitude or with an ignorant attitude. I don't know what I'm doing and we're fasting and we're getting hungry and Allah just can't wait for Maghrib. Avoid this. Love Allah Azzawajal's command. You're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imanan. Imanan. Remember this word. Live with this word during the day of Ramadan. You're fasting Imanan. Loving Allah Azza wa Jal, absolutely you're certain in the command of Allah with no doubt. And you're not fasting as a habit, right? Yani adatan. Don't you dare have this intention. Oh, you know what? Ramadan has become a habit for us and we're just fasting. Yeah, every year there's something called Ramadan and we just fasted and it's become a habit for us. We got used to it. La, la. The hadith is not saying that whoever fasts Ramadan as a habit the hadith is saying, whoever fasts Ramadan out of Iman, refresh this intention every day that you're fasting for the sake of Allah, for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And you're not fasting for dieting purposes. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, as funny as it sounds, but there are people, there are people that are ignorant in their deed. We ask Allah Azza wa to teach us and to grant us a beneficial knowledge. But there are people that are ignorant that when they think about fasting, they think, oh my God, how am I gonna inspire myself to fast? Yeah, there's a lot of health benefits. Detoxes the body, it cleanses the body, it rejuvenates the cells, it cleanses the cells from its toxins. Okay, you know what? I'm motivated to fast. Let's do a 30 day detox of the body. No, keep this away. Keep this thought away out of your mind. We're not fasting for dieting purposes. We're fasting imanan for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing and acknowledging that this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, there is not a single authentic hadith that has been reported concerning the benefits of fasting, the health benefits of fasting. There is one hadith that says, Sumu tasihu, fast and your health becomes improved. That's a weak hadith. So primarily when we fast, we do it as an act of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal. Secondary benefits, if there's health benefits that are proven in that, oh, alhamdulillah, no problems. This is the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, it's going to be beautiful. Of course, fasting is going to be a benefit to the human body. What Did you think that Allah Azza wa Jal will legislate upon his servants something that harms them? So do not think that I'm fasting for dining purposes. Don't even bring this attitude in your fasting. And I, 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 I don't like for people to mention this and for people to go out of their way and make lessons and conferences about the health benefits of fasting. What for? We don't need this. It, it, the body works as it is. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't legislate anything upon the servants except that it's beneficial for them. And yes, fasting has a lot of health benefits. And if we wanted to discuss these benefits, yeah, 
Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah has mentioned them in his book. Uh, I think it's Zad al-Ma'ad, you can find the health benefits of fasting and so on. But that's not the primary intention here. Imanan is the primary intention. We're fasting because Allah legislated fasting upon us. The second condition to earn this great reward of being forgiven, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadana imanan, we discussed this, wahtisaban, wahtisaban, fast Ramadan, seeking the reward from Allah alone. And this here, if you want to summarize it in one word, it means sincerity. Fasting Ramadan sincerely for the sake of Allah, expecting your reward from Him and no one else. You see, ihtisaban means sincerity. Sincerity means that you want your reward and, and your appreciation from Allah Azza wa Jal and no one else. You want to impress Allah Azza wa Jal. You want to earn Allah's acceptance, Allah's happiness, Allah's pleasure. You want the reward from Allah, no one else. I don't want reward from this person. I don't want reward from him. I don't want reward from anyone. Not, not interested. I don't even want a word of appreciation from anyone. I want my reward from Allah and Allah alone. So now, if people don't appreciate my fasting, if people don't care about my fasting, well, really, I don't care about what people think about me. And the people's opinion about my fasting, I really don't care. Because I'm fasting ihtisaban, seeking Allah's reward and appreciation and no one else's uh, acceptance and appreciation. That's ihtisaban. And as I share this word ihtisaban with you, um, you know, especially in Ramadan, we have a lot of our young children fasting with us. Children the age of 8, 9, 10, 13. And, and I find that a lot of parents motivate and encourage their children to fast, which is fantastic and excellent. But how do they do it? Most parents, what do they do? Or most organizations or committees, they would say that, okay, any child who fasts Ramadan, we're going to give him $10 for every day. And family members would do this to encourage their nephews, their nieces to fast. They say, any one of you who fasts 30 days, I will give them $1,000, a great reward. That's good. Motivate them. No problems. But it's time to introduce these young children to the concept of sincerity. It's time to introduce children to the concept of sincerity. Teach them before you set a grand prize for them, for their fasting. Tell them, we fast ihtisaban. Ultimately, we want our reward from Allah. We want Allah to be happy with us. We want Allah's approval, Allah's acceptance, Allah's reward. Allah will pay us. We don't want anyone to pay us in this world. Because people cannot, you, you cannot pay for my fasting. You can't reward me for my fasting. Only Allah can do that. Because when you fast, you've preferred what Allah wants over what you want. Because when you fast, your stomach, you desire to eat and drink. You have a strong passion and a desire for that. But then you say and you remind yourself, but Allah loves from me during the day that I give this up for his sake until Maghrib. So you prefer Allah's obedience over your obedience. Who can reward you for that? No human can reward for that. Because you gave it up for the sake of Allah. How can a human being reward you for this? The reward can only be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's time we introduce our young children to the concept of sincerity. Because... Sincerity, my brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, it is what is going to keep you motivated and consistent in your worship until the day you die. If you're not sincere in your worship, wallahi, you will not go far in your worship. Because if you're not sincere, that means you're doing the deed for the people's appreciation and approval. Pretty much, the people don't appreciate others very often. They might appreciate you once, twice, and then you'll fail. Your worship will, 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 will break. You'll fail in your worship if you depend on the people's appreciation and their reward. So teach your children the concept of sincerity. When you do an act sincerely for Allah and expect Allah to pay you, Allah to reward you, Allah to appreciate and accept you and be pleased with you, you're motivated and inspired to continue worship until the day you die. 
لأن الله سبحانه وتعالى is always there always watching over your actions always rewarding you for every single action you do even the moments of thirst during the day seek its reward from Allah عز وجل واحتسابا seek the reward the moment of thirst you feel when you feel thirsty during the day seek that moment seek its reward from Allah عز وجل والله والله it doesn't go to waste Allah would reward you even for that second of thirst during the day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you for the second for the moment of hunger that you experience during the day and for the moments of hardship that you experience during the day Allah Azza wa Jalla he says in surah At-Tawbah ذلك بأنه لا يصيبهم ظمأ ولا نصب ولا مخمصة في سبيل الله he said at the end of the ayah إلا كتب لهم به عمل صالح Allah Azza wa Jalla he said that not a single moment of thirst that they experience or hunger they experience or hardship they experience except that Allah Azza wa Jalla would write for them a good deed and this was primarily speaking about those who went out lil jihad fi sabilillah but then this concept it is included also and fit to describe also the pains that the fasting person goes through while he's fasting ihtisaba seek the reward from Allah What reward are you seeking from Allah? Now let's discuss that. What reward are you seeking from Allah? Number one, when you fast out of Iman, you're seeking the reward of forgiveness. You want Allah to forgive you, right? Ihtisaban. Look, the more intentions you put, the greater your reward is. And the small, the minimum number of intentions, according to your intention, is the reward. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That your deeds that you do, You are given reward according to what intention you have. So, ihtisaban. When you fast, seeking Allah's reward, what reward are you seeking? Listen, put these intentions. Number one, that Allah Azza wa Jal forgive your sins. That Allah purifies your heart because that's a reward of fasting. It cleanses and purifies the heart. You're seeking through your fasting uh, an-nasr, victory. You're seeking through your fasting victory for Ummatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes. Then the fasting earns us victory. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ You should know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, verily, victory comes with patience. And fasting has been described in the Qur'an as being patience. Allah azza wa jalla, he says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek Allah's help through patience and prayer. Patience here means fasting. Seek Allah's help through fasting and salat. Another name for fasting is patience. Because it is pretty much the entire fasting is patience. Right? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ That the patient, the patient, those who preserved in patience, Their reward is given in full by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any accountability. In that ayah, Al-Mufassirun said, Patience is fasting. Meaning the fasting people are given their reward in full without any accountability. So one of the intentions you intend when you fast, remember we said you're seeking Allah's reward, you want sins to be forgiven, heart to be cleansed and pure. You're seeking victory through your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the believers during the battle of Badr and it was the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is a month of victory because fasting prepares us for victory. When we fast as well, you're fasting so that Allah Azza wa Jal can grant you mercy. Intend that you want the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal through your fasting. Intend also that you're preparing to meet Allah Azza wa Jal Because the fasting prepares you to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Intend this during the day. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the fasting person, he has two moments of joy. The first moment of joy is a physical moment of joy in where he breaks his fast. So when you eat or you drink, there's a moment of joy there. And the second moment of joy is a spiritual joy enjoyment. And that is 
حين يلقى ربه أو حين لقاء ربه when he meets Allah سبحانه وتعالى الله أكبر إذا when you fast fast with احتسابا intending that my fasting this I'm intending through this fasting that it prepares me to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى just like Musa عليه السلام before he met Allah on the mountain of Al-Tur and Allah spoke to him and Allah gave him at Torah the book at Torah before Musa عليه السلام spoke to Allah Allah commanded him to fast 40 days in preparation with the meeting of Allah Azza wa Jal and in preparation to receive at Torah the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and this is why of course reading the Quran as you're fasting is very beneficial I'll speak to you later on during the month about the connection between fasting and the Quran now and also fast ihtisaban you wanting a taqwa that Allah Azza wa Jal promised didn't Allah say that fasting leads to at taqwa in the Quran so intent ihtisaban oh Allah I'm seeking your reward when I fast and this reward that I want from you alongside many others is at taqwa oh Allah grant me this taqwa taqwa is that you begin to increase in your obedience to Allah and decrease from your disobedience and sins and evil now now we're coming to the final part of the hadith at the end the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said now the result of the hadith so the hadith said whoever fasts out of faith I explained that and seeking the reward from Allah and this is the condition what's the result now what's the reward his past sins have already been forgiven listen carefully to how I'm translating his sins have or his past sins have already been forgiven Allahu Akbar and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ghufira Ghufira means have been forgiven strange how can that be the case we expect we expected that the hadith would be Ghafar Allahu lahu that Allah will forgive him because the forgiveness will happen at the end of the month because at the end of the month is when we complete the fasting of Ramadan. So being forgiven of your sins is a future matter. It happens at the end of the month. How come the hadith said Ghufira instead of Ghafara? The past was used that his sins have already been forgiven. You know what this implies? It means, yes, your sins would be forgiven at the end of the month, but Allah Azza wa Jal used the past tense and that creates a sense of certainty. Using the past tense implies certainty. In other words, guaranteed Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive your sins. Ghufira, done deal, forget about it. Your sins have already been forgiven. When you speak in that style, it implies certainty. It implies guaranteed that your sins are forgiven. There's no doubt about this. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, fast with certainty that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to forgive your sins at the end of this month. It's as certain as history. You know, events that happen in the past, history, you cannot change it. They are absolute facts and certain. That's the language Allah, that's the language the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used in this hadith. Oh, done and dusted. This is history. It's as certain as history that Allah will forgive guaranteed he'll forgive the sins at the end of the month so long as you fast completely out of faith and seeking the reward only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now al ulama rahimahumullah they differed among themselves as to which type of sins are forgiven the minor sins or the major sins or the minor and the major together so Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah a great scholar he said that major and minor sins are forgiven. Allahu Akbar. And the majority of ulama said that it's the minor sins that are forgiven and the major sins always require a tawbah. So no matter what we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity is huge. Allah azza wa jal's generosity is limitless. We cannot put a limit to Allah azza wa jal's generosity. And if you enter this month of Ramadan and you fast Ramadan, then we are hoping that Allah Azza wa forgives our minor and our major sins. And during the days of Ramadan, repent. For the one who repents, 
definitely Allah Azza wa Jal, alongside forgiving his minor sins, will also forgive his major sins. Any kind of major sin is forgiven with any kind of tawbah you do during the day, during the night, before Ramadan, after Ramadan, and a tawbah during Ramadan is extra special. So rush to a tawbah, fast correctly, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I will conclude now. Jazakumullahu khayran for tuning in. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he makes this lesson of benefit. I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us the ability to fast a complete form of fasting. That we fast the way he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to fast. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to forgive our shortcomings. My brothers and sisters in Islam, one last piece of advice, and that is that during the day when you fast, um, if you feel like your fasting wasn't complete because you acted something haram, you spoke haram, you spoke evil words, you did evil things, right? Seek Allah's forgiveness. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Because al-istighfar, when you see astaghfirullah after the worship, it patches, it patches the shortcomings in the worship. It patches the damage of the worship. This is why we say astaghfirullah after our prayer three times. Not because we did a sin, but because of the shortcomings that took place in Salat. We became heedless. We forgot what we read, what the Imam said. We forgot something here. We forgot something there. We dozed off. We lost focus and concentration. After Salat, you say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. It patches the damage that happened in our Salat. It closes those gaps, making our Salat perfect and complete. So if you feel like you did something wrong during the day of Ramadan, at the end of that day, don't forget to make abundant istighfar. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. And this astaghfirullah, hoping from it that it patches the damage of your fasting. And it rectifies those shortcomings in your fasting until your fasting becomes complete and perfect in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us understanding of his deen. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability that we worship him until the day we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu wa liyu thalika wal qadiru alayh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa jazakum Allahu khayra. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. We are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free seven day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.